<clears throat> so hey everybody, I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside and I uh, wanted to talk about today's correspondences for Work and Magic. Um, I said yesterday that we might talk about using, uh, going over the, the, the retrograding planets, I include those. We've got so many of them that it just really gives you an opportunity to uh, uh, use this time and focus on the messages of each one um, and craft a ritual, you know, whether, whether it's like a purification ritual or realigning your, your uh, perceptions, whatever it is, you can use these as an impetus. And so let's go ahead and do that. Now, now Jupiter governs today, so you could, you could begin with Jupiter in retrograde, um, let's just go over real quickly, though, um, the planets that are in retrograde. We've got Jupiter, so inner reflection is warranted. And in Pisces, it centers on discovering inner truth. So anytime you look at anything that's a planet or planetary body that's retrograding, it, it signals the time to look within. Jupiter is very expansive, and so this could be a very expansive type of a working if you're going to use the Jupiter retrograde uh, as a focus. Neptune, dis discernment is a factor in this retrograde where you look within to determine truth from fiction and arrive at a more realistic understanding of the truths that surround you. That's a real serious thing for people right now. So you could even do that, uh, if you're not having any trouble that way, then you could craft a, a general ritual uh, or working that helps you or, or that helps other people that are having trouble discerning truth from fiction right now. We've got a lot of people in this country that are doing that, okay? And so this might be something that is more like an earth healing type of, an, of, a, of a working uh, with whoever's being afflicted by this, you know, benefiting from it. Uh, Juno, now Juno is going to go out, it's going to go direct in 11 more days. So this is about how you look inward uh, uh, at selecting, committing to, and interacting with partners in your life. Um, again, that's, you know, part of all of this that's been going on. Partnerships and families and relationships have been so affected by all the conspiracy nonsense that it's it's really, I mean, it's even impacting our safety and health surrounding the pandemic. So you can see how significant that is. So that'd be something you could work with as well. Saturn, and again, you know, I mean, you can do this at any time with Juno, but but all I'm saying is it's in retrograde now retrograde right now which gives you a special focus there special influence saturn is in retrograde still reassess boundaries and how you structure your life pluto already the the planet of transformation inner transformation is favored you could work with that as well uh palace now palace is an interesting uh goddess to work with here an interesting uh planetary body um now she is all about sensing patterns in life and so so how do you, so you have to be able with palace, you can use that energy to stand back. It's like a really great seven energy. I don't know if seven's related to palace. I'll have to look and see if I can find that out. Um, but, but palace is all about seeing patterns and developing a different strategy. So, um, that, that there you can reassess something like that and that could be also involved in a working uh, chiron also in retrograde reflect on inner wounding supply their message and then move on but eris eris is the eris just went just went retrograde like yesterday or last night fully retrograde the thing about eris eris is new uh henry seltzer is is uh uh uh, uh, he's, he's doing some, uh, work. He, he's written a book, uh, called Eris, the 10th planet or something like that. Anyway, um, that is a really excellent book. Uh, and, and it's beginning to, he's taking a look at how the feminine manifestation of power, we think of power as masculine. Well, it's not so. This is the female warrior within energy, okay? How you express yourself with others. It's sort of tangled up with Lilith in a way. Uh, at least I see it that way. So this is a time to explore and reevaluate how you express feminine power to maximize your potential. So that I think in that with with the rise of the feminine within the divine feminine within with the goddess presence returning to this extraordinarily uh, discombobulated experience that we're living in. I mean, can you imagine thinking that men control everything? I mean, that's nuts, is it not? And they've done it through 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 oppression, right? 
And so everything you see that's happening now is an expression of the masculine, the inappropriate overuse of masculine power that tries to control and oppress people. Well, now you're seeing the planet itself saying, uh uh, we're not doing that anymore. And the balance is going to return. So you're going to see a more balanced expression in the future between the masculine and feminine energies or influences within. And so right now, um, that's why I'm thinking that Eris and uh, uh, Juno influences in terms of social justice. Uh, uh, you could put those two together um, and because I think the broader message about how we use feminine power uh, is really the underlying thing here. And you could you could incorporate any number of the retrograding planetary influences into into a working like that. So explore that today. Think about how you might make that happen. Um and uh, use the magical correspondences. Remember, Jupiter is an air element planet. The color's blue. Uh, emerald, jasper, sapphire are the crystals. Um, if you can't get any of the resins, then, then go with, uh, 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 I would just go with sandalwood or frankincense. Or always, copal is, all, is another good substitute, all around substitute. Copal is a good substitute for frankincense and vice versa. Um, let's see, herbs, basil, agrimony. Agrimony is an interesting herb because basically when you're looking at the flower essence, um, you're looking at someone who's got like an agrimony. Ma Matthew Wood calls this a, no, Matthew Moore, is it Matthew Wood? Yeah, Matt Wood. He calls it an agrimony personality where you're just, you're just not you're not comfortable in your own skin. You're just not feeling right. You know, your emotions aren't right. You can't really pin it down. That's an agrimony experience. And so you can take a little flower essence and, and it, it makes you feel better. So anyway, <laughs> there's, there's that, um, mince, dandelion, borage, bug loss, wood, betony, hyssop, hyssop's all around good, uh, good herb to use. If you want to burn any of this stuff, if you want to cast it to the, to the collective consciousness, hyssop's a good one to do that with. Henbane, poplar, oak, plum, fig trees, meadow sweet, uh, meadow sweet actually is one of those aspirin substitutes like uh, uh, like willow white willow bark is and when we talk about the bark we're not talking about the outside bark you have to scrape that off and there's the inner cambium layer right there that that's that's the inner bark that you want to use if you want to go and cut some some you know white willow weeping willow basically is what I use you just scrape off the outside layer and then get that inner layer that's the, it's more yellowish that's the layer that they're talking about to use use um, when you're going to tincture it or use it in teas or something for to reduce fever or or to control pain so meadow sweet though is another one and if you've ever smelled the bloom on it the bloom is weird looking it's all fuzzy and everything it's very cool um it's literally smells like warm honey I mean, I, I mean, I'm not kidding about that. It smells like warm honey. It's just wonderful. Uh, so that can be used on the altar as well, especially to get you in the mood to do inner work. You can, you can, you know, use it in an aromatherapy fashion, go clip one off and smell it. And it just, it just relaxes you and calms you and makes you one with the bees. You're, you're, you're literally uh, probably vibrating on that. To, what is it? Is it a, is it a 132 or what, what is the, the, the one for, uh, I don't have my, my, uh, what you call it's my, uh, 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 tuning forks out here. I could tell you, but there's one that's a frequency for earth. Gosh, I want to say it's, is it 132 Hertz? I, I'll have to look, I'll have to look anyway. Um, they're a fun thing to work with too. Maybe we'll talk about that. I've talked about it in a, in a, on the YouTube channel, but maybe we'll talk about it again here, uh, and talk about sound healing and stuff. So anyway, uh, but that's all I wanted to say today. Uh, again, the, the, the rune divination is on Suzalyes and Degas. Um, here we're balancing our awareness between spirit and the ego's perception. Ansu's and Alyes draw in higher self-awareness. Ansu's as Odin's rune expresses divine eloquence. This is Ansu's, whereas Alyes, uh, 
which I believe was our, uh, wasn't that our rune today in, uh, uh, yeah, it was our rune today in Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune, so check that out as well. Uh, that's also, we're drawing in higher self-awareness. All ye's is, uh, uh, where I should say, Ansu's as Odin's rune expresses divine eloquence, where all ye, whereas all ye's provides the connection between the collective consciousness and physical form. In rune lore, it's the Bifrost Bridge. That's what it represents. Uh, both allow the voice of inner truth to resonate in our outer awareness. Degas sets us on the path uh, for renewal as we stand on the precipice of new awareness and all the experiences that follow. It asks us to make a choice. How much will the ego determine, determine our fate or will we be wise enough to allow spirit to inform that outcome? Now, you could use this as a focus as well uh, for any magic you want to work today. Um, but I highly recommend learning how to, uh, and the only way you do that is just to do it, okay? Just to begin working with retrograding planetary influences uh, in how you, because most of the magic I think that we work really needs to have to do with self-empowerment, okay? It, it, we can't be effective for anyone else if we're not taking care of our own self. And so I think a lot of the magic I like to work has to do, again, with personal empowerment. And then you can express that, that out into the universe if you want to. You know, can always apply to other people, but you've got to first take care of yourself. You know, uh, that, that's why I end all of these things I do with be good to yourself first <laughs> be good to one another and blessed be because you have to take care of you we forget that right all of us do we forget to take care of ourselves and nurture ourselves and be and be sure that we're that we're approaching things in, in a balanced fashion that's informed by spirit instead of ego so that's why i think that most magic we work really ought to do with self-empowerment you know, more than anything else, you know, first take care of you before, you know, you start judging some other situation, right? Maybe you do that and somehow your judgment changes, maybe. And maybe you don't, you know, work a, a binding or a curse when really you just need to sit and wait it out, right? So anyhow, um, that's what I'm saying. And uh, uh, just something to think about here on a Thursday. So, you know, Hang in there, have a good day, and be good to yourself, be good to one another, and blessed be.